Today we will be taking a look at how I turn my car into a racing simulator. The controls from the car are provided as a joystick that is available for use with any game on the computer. I wrote software to read the state of the controls from the car over the OBD, or Onboard Diagnostics port. This is a network inside the car that contains high frequency communications between subsystems in modern vehicles. I used the U-Input interface in Linux, which allows creating virtual input devices, to surface events to other applications. This means that the joystick is available to any application that uses the standard joystick interfaces within Linux, from serious business simulators like Speed Dreams to lighthearted games like Super Tux Kart. I built this cable to read data from the onboard CAN buses of the Cadillac ELR. This car is unique in that there are two OBD style ports, one in the driver's footwell and one in the passenger's footwell. All of the data that I needed was available from the driver's footwell. The additional connector contains information about the high voltage systems of the car, since this is an electric vehicle. I wrote software to read the state of the vehicle controls and forward them to applications, like any other joystick, via U-Input. I started out with the throttle input because it is well documented in various Chevy Volt online communities. Then I added steering, brake, and paddle shifters. I reverse engineered the paddle shifter messages by capturing all data on the CAN bus and searching for single bit changes in the data that correlate to the button state. It took me about 30 minutes through a process of elimination to figure it out. Once I had the CAN bus messages figured out, I proceeded to the fun part of setting up the projector. I used some very cheap white blackout cloth as a surface to project on. It is not the best setup, but for $25 I can't complain. I have one of these Pico projectors. They are nice because they are portable and small. I aim the projector so that the bottom of the projected image is below the visible portion of the windshield. One downside of the Pico projector is that they have lower resolution and lower brightness than a full-size projector. This setup could be greatly improved with a less compact projector. With the projector and screen in place, the system was ready to go. The great thing is that it takes just a few minutes to set up and tear down. The great thing about using a car as a racing joystick is that it has all of the things you need in a real simulator. Great speakers, a comfortable and correct seat, ergonomic controls, it's almost as if a car was designed to be easy to drive. Obviously there are some caveats to a system like this. One is that the car does not provide force feedback in the wheel, so it's a pretty opaque driving experience. The second would be that the windshield is not entirely filled with the projected image, but this could be improved with a better projector. It sure is fun though. This is all possible because this is an electric vehicle. The steering wheel can be moved without running an engine. After an hour and a half, the car will time out and needs to be restarted. It's all one big hack and I'm happy that it works as well as it does. Well, I hope you enjoyed my weekend project. I spent a little time on it and I had a lot of fun. I also learned a few things, which is always a goal of these projects. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like button. It really helps me out. And if you have any suggestions for ways I can improve my system, feel free to leave a comment. Um, I will definitely read them. And if you want to see more from me, I post a video maybe once every month or two about projects that are very similar to this. So if you like to see this kind of work, feel free to subscribe and I promise not to spam your feed. Otherwise, that's all I've got for you now. So I will see you next time.